Greetings and welcome to this video. Today we will be discussing a an interesting mechanics problem regarding a can crusher. This is a can crusher. Uh, one would place a aluminum can, standard drinking aluminum can, in this area, take this armature and push down on it, crushing the can. There are many different designs for such a can crusher. Here's a diagram of another one. In this case they have a bent arm here pushing down on this crusher block. This is a pop can and those who know me know that this is the correct term. And again this handle is pushed down with force P here and this piston pushes down on this block crushing the can. Now I have a simpler setup which makes the calculations a little bit easier. It's not as efficient or as uh, well set up as this is, but we will use it so that it's uh, easier to analyze. So here is my version of the can crusher. Notice the pins located here, 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 and also one here so that you can connect a handle or something like that. This part is connected to the wall this goes on top of the can itself and crushes it as you take the handle and push it down. I made a diagram for us to show the dimensions. So here we have again the model so we can just refer to it here but we have the dimensions and it's in millimeters going from here to here is 100, from here to here is 150, and from here down to this point is 200. I have a cross section shown of this particular member, and this is in, again, millimeters, 3 millimeters by 10 millimeters. Now, the main focus of problem here is actually this member right here. This is going to be a column as the force comes down on this the column is loaded in compression as columns are uh, by definition loaded. Now, Obviously this is a kind of a long member so it's going to possibly fail in one of two ways. Either it's going to go side to side here or it may go out uh, to the forward or the backward of this particular plane. So on this cross section it will look like either bowing out to the left or to the right or to the top or to the bottom. Again here top to bottom is forward to backward in this particular view. So we've got two possible failure modes uh, both having to do with buckling of a column. But the first step is solving the for the force I have shown here the forces in red arrows. So if you push down here there will be a corresponding force up from the can. So this will be the same force that has to be transmitted to the column. So uh, we're going to do a statics analysis first to calculate it and then we are going to go through and analyze the failure mode of this column. After that, if we need to, we'll, we will redesign the column for improved strength. All right, so I have copied over uh, the diagram that we need and we will simply use our favorite equations. We'll start with summation of the moments about, and we'll just call this here point A and they always have to equal zero. Now put some forces in here. Now what we want to really solve for is the amount of force required to crush the can. Now we estimate that the can can put upwards of 100 pounds 
um, but we're going to use SI units and that's about 450 newtons. Actually, 444.8, but 450 should do just fine. Okay, so there's P going down. We take the absolute value of 450 newtons, and we multiply it by the distance to point A, which is 100 millimeters. And then we add that to P times its distance, not the 150 to the 450, 150 plus the 100. So it's going to be 250 millimeters to point A. Now the question is, what direction are they going? OK, this 450 looks like it's going counterclockwise. The P, well, we're not quite sure because it, it's an unknown. So we'll just keep that as assuming it's positive, which means it's going counterclockwise as well. So rewriting this, we have 0 equals negative 4, 5, 0, and add two zeros because we got 100 there. So 45,000 Newton millimeters minus P times 250 millimeters. If I put this on the other side, so I just add that to both sides. I end up with P times 250 millimeters equals negative 45,000 Newton millimeters. Then I'll divide both sides by 250 millimeters. And I end up with P equals negative 180 newtons. Well, that was pretty easy. The negative, again, only means that it's going down, which is to be expected. So now normally I'd check our uh, work here, uh, but that would require solving for the forces at A and then use, uh, using moments and then using forces to check the work or vice versa. But I would like to move on to the uh, problem of the column. For this particular video, we're just going to do a quick review. We discussed the uh, overall design of a can crusher, how this is simplified, but it helps us do the computations fairly easily. And we use moments and the algebra and found our unknown P here. Now, one last thing is that this is 180 newtons. This is approximately the same as 40 pounds, which any adult that can uh, lean on their hands should be able to apply at this load. So this does make sense, and it's a reasonable design for a can crusher. Thanks for watching, but make sure you stay tuned because this is only the first part in the analysis and design of this particular column here. So stay tuned.